Hello everyone and welcome back to the second episode of Vineyard Voice. Today we have with us Sam and Abby who are currently doing mission work in Thailand. How are you Sam and Abby? Good. Very good, thank you. It's great to have you guys on board. Um, I'm sure I'm very looking forward to this chat. So just to start, I thought we'd just chat a little bit about the story of you guys, who you are, where you're from, and your journey to and in the truth. Um, so I'm Sam, and I grew up in Adelaide, South Australia. And I'm Abby. I grew up in Sydney. Uh, we met, say, 15 years ago, 2008, in Israel on a young people's trip um, and basically have been having adventures together since then. As your niece, I can definitely attest to that <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, so obviously this isn't the first bit of preaching effort that you've been involved in. You've done a lot of other preaching efforts prior to this. Um, do you want to just chat a little bit about those other preaching efforts you've been involved in? Uh, yeah, so um, in our home ecclesia back in New South Wales, we ran a Bible education centre which had a cafe attached to it as well. Um, and we ran our Bible classes out of there on Wednesday night, youth activities and outreach activities there as well. Um, we ran that five days a week uh, for two years and we're quite a small ecclesia, so that was quite a lot of work but was fantastic, rewarding and really gave us exposure to preaching in everyday life. And then, yes, we've also done Kenya. Um, so we've done Kenya twice. We did it for nine months the first time, so that was in 2015, and then we went back a year later and we were there for four months that time. Right, okay, perfect. So what first drew you guys to mission work? Um, so we've always been tended to go on the uh, world trips and holidays and, and you know, get, get caught up in that kind of exciting adventure, um, but then we just felt like we wanted to do something that was a little bit more meaningful and more Christ-like. Um, so we we decided to to try out preaching. We'd been watching what Agape in Action were doing and we just really loved it and wanted to be a part of it. So we thought, why not give it a try? So, yeah, we've, we've loved it. It's been very, very rewarding, hard, but rewarding and, yeah, we wouldn't have changed anything. Amazing. Okay, so um, in Thailand, what sort of projects are you currently involved in out there? Um, so we're involved in one big project. Um, it's called the Thailand Learning Centre or TLC. And the whole aim of the TLC is to get um, disadvantaged young people, so young people that might have been dumped here, um, might have been involved in human trafficking, or they're just poor people from to hill tribes that have no access to education. Um, and we want to give them life skills and job skills and teach them about the Bible and and help them to understand God and, 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 and the hope, their hope for the future. Um, so, yeah, we, we get, um, we have about 10 to 16 students at any given time and they come and live with us on site. So we've got 14 different bungalows. So there's some is the accommodation for the, the volunteer teachers and field workers um, and then the rest is for the student dorms. Um, and they live with us anywhere from th one month to three months. So it's very full on. We're always on, um, from eight, eight is brekkie up until 10 is lights out. So it's quite a big day and it's a big day for the students as well. Um, but yeah, we try to, we, we have a program that we stick to pretty strictly. We always start and end the day with, um, with God. So we do a, a prayer and meditation. Um, and then yeah, our day sessions are, um, Bible, English and life skills and then we have an elective in the afternoon like computer or barista or first aid and then we finish the night with Bible art or sometimes it's just a fun one like games night or quiz night. So, yeah, it's it's really fun, really good project. But, but like Abby said, everything's <laughs> God-focused. So even the life skills is all whether we're doing budgeting or family planning or whatever it is, it's all based around Bible principles and Bible direction on how to be a good person and then obviously how to be more like Jesus. Wow, that does sound like you're doing an amazing effort out there. And I love the whole beginning with God and ending with God. I read recently, and whether this is just clickbait, I've no idea, um, <clears throat> that 
whatever you do first thing in the morning is what you want to do for the rest of the day. So like if you just jump on your phone first thing in the morning, then you just constantly, oh, I just want to check my phone. But obviously starting with God is just the focus then for the rest of the day, which I guess makes it easier for you guys to just pull that into your life skills, into your, just your daily activities. So that's fantastic. I do love that. Yeah. We had a student so obviously, come, Oh, sorry. We had a student come with one of the programs and he had a book from one of the schools he'd been at and on the front it said no bible no breakfast and um we've kind of made that a little bit of a motto as well so we do bible before breakfast now because of that and it works really really well so good start to the day that's great oh, i love that that's cool um so obviously the thailand learning center is a really really massive effort that you guys are heading so what sort of was the process that you went through to create the learning center so like looking at funding or recruiting other field workers just talk us so through that so we were here in 2019 just before covid um and we met uh, brother terry nutter from queensland who's been involved in thailand for the last 12 plus years and we had a bit of a chat to him about our previous experiences in Kenya, and he had some ideas on on some uh, forward ple- preaching plans. And we kind of collaborated and came up with some ideas. And then we were approached to put a proposal together from from WCF. So we put an official proposal together, which is basically the Thailand Learning Centre, and we got approved. But unfortunately. Then COVID hit, and so we couldn't travel, couldn't do anything in that time. So we patiently waited, and then uh, 2021, basically, we said, let's get going. And we reached out to a lot of friends and family and said, we're coming, would you like to be involved? And a lot have joined us, which is fantastic. We also had the opportunity to present to Rathmines Bible School in New South Wales uh, at the December Bible School, and, and a lot of interest there as well. Um, and then our Facebook page and, and WCF's um, outreach efforts as well have promoted us. And so that interest is quite good. And from that, we've also gained lots of positive feedback and people who are interested in joining us as well. Well, massive process. Four years in the making. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still ongoing here as well. We, it takes a long time as, as anyone who's been to a foreign country trying to learn foreign processes. There's a foundation which is set up over here, but then you've got to jump through all the legal frameworks. Abby and I have got our volunteer visas eventually, which has taken five months. Fancy pets. Um, but it, it, it's quite an interesting experience to go through all of the all the processes of getting it up and running, and now we are fairly compliant and we're continuing on that path as well. Yeah, perfect. Amazing. Um, so obviously you're doing this preaching effort. Um, there's sort of a segment that I'd like to pull through into each episode called Inspiring Stories. So what is, for each of you, the most inspiring thing you've witnessed during your preaching efforts? Um, so once a week we have a community outreach project, so it gives the students a chance to give back. So they've been given this awesome opportunity. It's all for free, um, and we want them to do it as a bit of a like understanding that they've had something amazing, so how can they pay it back? So we've gone to a local orphanage twice now and both times we've been absolutely blown away by how much the students have embraced it. So we literally don't do a thing but drive them there and then they, so the day before they do all their planning um, and they just do everything. So we put them in groups, one's in charge of Sunday school teaching, one's in charge of um, games and songs and one's in charge of activities. So they just take it in turns and they just, they're, they're so, so, like it's just very inspiring and exciting to watch them even copy some of the activities that we've done in session and, and copy the way that they've been taught and they're now passing it on to these little kids in an orphanage. Like it is, it's very cool, very, very nice to watch that. That sounds Amazing. Yeah, I can imagine stuff like that. It's just what drives you along to continue your, your preaching efforts and your mission work. Yeah. We we also have had a baptism, which is awesome. It's phenomenal. The, the last baptism in Thailand was more than five years ago. Um, we had a group come over from Myanmar for two weeks, and one of the students there actually lives in Thailand in a border town. And at the end of the two weeks, he asked for baptism. and um, 
we said, yeah, let's let's continue on. And we did another two weeks of very intensive study. He, he knew his Bible very well. He needed some correction in a few areas here and there. But in all of our discussions, we would sit down, use the Bible as our guide, and he would say, yeah, I can totally understand that straight away. And then the next day he'd come back and would say, what happened yesterday? He would review it to us in his own words, showing he understood it. And it's just absolutely inspiring to see a person accept God, accept all of what God's plan is for us and a future and want to be baptized. And so he was, and now he's a part of the ecclesia here in Chiang Mai. That is really incredible. And I can imagine that has much bigger impact on you seeing the whole process from beginning to end rather than just, yeah, obviously turning up for the baptism. I can imagine that having a massive impact. I've got one more, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go for one it. One more story. So, <laughs> another very special moment that actually made me cry and I had to excuse myself because I was teaching. So I was talking about mental health and, you know, creating a happy place. So when things are getting a bit too much for you in your, you know, in your life and how can you go to a happy place in your head? And we handed out these worksheets and you either had to write or draw about a happy place that, you know, if you weren't coping, that's where you go to. And two of the students totally independently drew TLC down to a T. So all the little hearts and the little signs and the little people, like, so that was their happy place that they were going to go to. And I was like, (laughs) and these were two students who have absolutely horrible life stories. Like one's been dumped here from his parents and gone back to China. And the other one is just very badly treated in his family. And so it was just really, really nice to be able to provide them a, a safe place that In the future, if they're feeling down or alone, they can actually just think about that and that can make them feel happier and feel God's love. So that was really special for me too. I would absolutely be bawling my eyes out at that as well. Don't worry. (laughs) (laughs) So this is a full-time thing you guys are doing for a year. Is that right? Yes. So we've got funding for a year. We're here for nine months. Sam's trying to push it out a bit longer, but I am saying nine months because it originally started three months and then we realised we had to be here longer. So, yeah, nine months. But we've got funding for a year and then we assess it from there. Okay. So how does, obviously it's a massive thing to move countries for that extent of time. How does this sort of field work affect your everyday life or your job or your house in Australia, those sorts of things? affects it massively. (laughs) It it affects every part of your life. So I quit my job, but Sam was blessed enough, you would say. In um, January, he started his own business that just did really well, which is like, which has funded us to come here for the nine months. Um, And then it's still able to be operated and running while we're over here. So he takes a couple of hours in the day to still run that back home. But obviously it's a massive commitment. The biggest thing is probably our dogs. We're very sad about leaving them. So we have a house sitter um, and they do a really nice job with the dogs. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a big thing and we have a, we're part of a very small ecclesia. So it's a massive thing to leave them as well. And, and like they really count on every member there. So it's a, it's a big thing to not be part of that. Um, and obviously family and friends, it's, it's really tricky. Yeah. There, there obviously is lots of positives as well. So it, it, it is it is hard to be away, but it's only when when you ask get asked a question like this, "What do you miss?" that it actually comes up. <laughs> the rest of the time, we're generally very busy, and everything that we're doing is so purposeful here that it actually feels really fulfilling. And you wake up every day going, "We know what we're doing today, and we know we're going to make a change," which is fantastic and it's inspiring. But yeah. but it is. As Abby said, there is lots of things that we miss and we would love to go back to, but for right now, yeah. we know that this is our life. Well, we've been here five and a half months now, so we're over halfway and, yeah, it's gone very quick and it's like we're working much more than you would with an everyday job, but it's a different kind of work. So, yeah, it's very rewarding. Yeah, I think the sort of what people give up to do this sort of thing is something that generally if you haven't done it yourself you sort of don't realize exactly 
the amount of effort. It's not just the time. There's so much more than that that you're giving up and you're putting into manifesting Christ. And it is very inspiring for me to see these sorts of things happen. I am always in awe of people like yourselves who go out and give up your time and so much more to, to do this sort of effort. So we're all very, very grateful for the effort that you put in. So obviously Thailand is a very, very different country to Australia. So what sort of, um, in our cultural diversity segment, what sort of maybe a cultural difference or something you've had to adjust to that maybe you didn't think you'd have to or you weren't expecting? So language is a, is a massive thing, obviously. it's um, Most people speak some English here, but English isn't isn't well spoken everywhere so there's always that on a daily basis which is a bit tedious so every session has to be translated every convo with the kids you're using google translate on your phone (laughs) but the people here are just incredible they are so kind and loving and caring so if they see you in trouble they want to naturally help you so that's just really really nice you don't feel like you're going to be ripped off or taken advantage of. Um, if you accidentally overpay or something like that, mm-hmm. they always highlight that and they give you back the money and say, no, you've done it wrong. Um, very, very lovely people. And just uh, daily life here is very easy with the people around. They want to help. They're always trying to be of service. The students are the same. And it's, it's um, a very inclusive place to be a part of. So it's really, really nice to be here, living here. Um, I think one of the things as well, we've been doing a fair bit out in like remote hill tribes um, just to recruit our students and also to see if we can uh, do any preaching and conversions out there. And when Sam was first talking to them saying we'd come out and do, you know, special like Bible day, he was kind of feeling them out to see, you know, if they expected us to bring anything like food or money or whatever. And they were kind of feeling us out to see if they had to pay for us or our petrol. So it was really nice that they had zero expectations and they thought that they might have to pay for the privilege of us coming. So that is very nice change than what we've experienced in other places. Yeah, that is massive. Just knowing that they want you there so desperately like that Mm. just makes a massive difference to your efforts. So, see, with the Thailand Learning Centre, you guys are both very heavily involved. What is a daily sort of schedule for yourselves each day? What do you do every day? So, Sam's more of the um, background organiser guy and he's also the cook. So, we're trialling um, a few different things this month. So, he's doing the cooking for the meals and I am more the teacher. So, I do a lot of the sessions and writing the programs and being the madam boss so that's more my role and sam's more the, the logistics and, yeah. and the cooking so obviously cost and budgets and all of that is is where i kind of take over and we our budget isn't as as good as it could have been for for things like food um so minimizing cost is is something that i'm trying to do and, and cooking so generally i get up earlier than everyone else and start cooking for the day uh, everyone else gets up uh, for breakfast uh, around 8 a.m. and we have the morning devotional before breakfast. Then from there, we go straight into an hour and a bit of Bible, a short break, some English um, for another hour or so and another morning tea break. And then Abby does life skills. So life skills is like um, we've done heaps of life, to- life topics. So it's like how to communicate well, setting goals, how to prepare for a job, um, budgeting and saving, mental health, um, you know, growth and sex ed and peer pressure, social media, teamwork. So trying to cover like all of the big, the big topics with a massive Bible focus as well. Um, From there we have lunch and then after that we have electives. So it might be computers and just learning all about computers because most of them have mobile phones and that's their technology, but word processing and accessing different things on computers and printing and formatting is something that they need help with. Uh, we also do first aid in that elective as well and barista learning how to use a coffee machine and things like that. So most of these young people, their job opportunities will be Fairly menial tasks, so it will be a receptionist at a hotel or a barista or a tour guide. So if they've got one of these skills or multiple of these skills, 
they can probably go out and get a job in the Chiang Mai area. So we're just trying to bump them up a level basically. So at the moment they're like just above very hard manual labour and we're bumping them up to, hey, you could work in an office, you could work in a cafe. So it's just changing their outlook a little bit at the same time as teaching them about God. Oh, then then it's a free afternoon. So usually they've got a free free time from three to six and they do all their washing and chores and they might go and play sport. But it's not free time for us and that's what we say to all of the volunteers that come. That's when we try to get the volunteers to be available to spend time with the students then. So whether it's you sit down and you play Uno you know, or you go and kick the, the soccer ball around, like it's we Building try Building relationships yeah. and connections so then we can have those deeper conversations one-on-one any questions that they were too afraid to ask in the group. Um, but they're also mentally exhausted by yeah. then because everything's been taught in English and translated and there's new concepts and different ideas that they would never have experienced before. So they are generally either playing sport or, or having a nap in the afternoon. I can definitely see um, how important those connections are in free time and things like that just building a rapport with the students so that when you come to teaching there's the respect there there's the yeah this person spent time to chat to me and to ask about my personal life I love listening to them like I want to learn more yeah. I can yeah even myself yeah, exactly. when I was a student I appreciated that in school or in uni or in Sunday school you just yeah the teacher who puts the effort in to build those relationships and those connections is the teacher that you tend to sort of draw towards a bit more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So if anyone wanted to sort of look more into what you're doing in Thailand or maybe wanted to get involved if you're after any of that, where would you direct them to? Our Facebook page. It has everything. So we try to do a couple of updates a week about what we've been doing. So Thailand Learning Centre, um, that's what it's called on Facebook. Um, and yes, if people want to come and volunteer, please come and help because it is very tiring. So you're on from 8 till 10, 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. And even if you're not teaching, you're prepping or you're cleaning, you're doing the dishes or you're chatting to someone or, you know, like it's, it's very intense. So the more people that are here, the better it is for everyone. So and, please and, come help. And if you've got a skill that you think would be helpful like a, a job skill or some kind of training skill that you can you can share with other people that's fantastic mm. we we need all different types abby and i are very organized kind of people um and we like to organize and run make, make sure everything's running smoothly but we also need people for those one-on-one conversations and that building the friendships and and developing relationships is really important as you said so we need people who do that as well um We've got an online application which we can send you the link for as well uh, so people who are interested can put their their skills and profile into there and then we can go, yep, yeah, that would be awesome and here's the best time for, for us here at the TLC. Okay, perfect. So we're probably about ready to wrap this up. So my last sort of segment that I try to bring into every episode, um, which has been one so far, so... This is progress. <laughs> um, what sort of uh, is, is takeaways? So a preaching lesson or takeaway for our listeners from each of you? I think um, Thailand is a predominantly Buddhist country, like 97% or something like that, and the Christian population is quite small. And so from an outsider looking in, you could possibly say what's the point in preaching in Thailand because it's going to be quite difficult. But I think that's makes it even more inspiring when you get results and all we're trying to do is show the love of Christ to other people and so by our example we hope that they can see that we've got a message that is worth sharing and we can see that that's happening so all we're doing is following what Christ did and trying to help others make their life better and if we get a chance to preach to them we make that opportunity and it's it's working and so it's really inspiring for me personally and I think as well, one thing that we've said, and we've said this from the start, anyone can preach. It's not just a certain select group of people that are available or able to teach. We've had like a young family that came for three months and they had kids aged like, I don't know, eight, six, four and one and they did it. And we've had old people like and we've got an old lady who's 84 
84, 85, she's coming in March for a couple of weeks and there's been, you know, just a massive range of people and situations. It's not just, there's not a certain type of perfect person who should be doing preaching. Anyone can and anyone should. And we're not saying everyone should come overseas. You can do it at home. But if you did want the opportunity, this is one of the best places to do it. It's easy. It's safe. It's clean. It, yeah. It's easy to travel to. And, and again, it's a very nice part of Thailand to be. We're in the mountains. It's beautiful with nature all around us. Yeah. And it's just an awesome opportunity. You get to spend 24 seven with a group of disadvantaged young people that you can mentor and teach about God. Like it's, it's a very rare opportunity and we're so, so grateful to be part of it. And we'd just love others to come and be able to be part of it too. The more you talk about Thailand, the closer I am to buying a plane ticket and heading out there myself. <laughs> you need to come. <laughs> you would be amazing. You need to come. <laughs> <laughs> it is. If you're um, thinking about first time, if you're thinking about first time mission not that work, she's first time. No, I'm because, saying anyone who's thinking about first time mission work. This is a great place because you do have space for yourself, and you do have um, other people who are experienced here to help you. But also, you've got an incredible audience who want to know more about God, and sharing that is what Jesus asked of us. He says, "Go to all the world and preach the gospel," and that's what we're trying to do here in Thailand. That is incredible. And I have loved chatting to you guys and hearing more about what you're doing out there in Thailand. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap this up? Oh, I think that's good. Uh, thank you so much, Bethany. And, and we thank the WCF as well for their support. We couldn't be doing this without them and they've given us an incredible opportunity to... We absolutely uh, love dealing with them. They're yeah. so amazing. <laughs> so we're very grateful. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on and chatting to us about the work you're doing in Thailand. Um, God bless your efforts that you're doing out there. We all really appreciate it. And I'm sure everyone will love listening to this podcast. <laughs>